Uh, greetings to you all. Today we continue with part two, uh, the Church of Philadelphia. And we know that Philadelphia means brotherly love. Uh, in part one, we dealt with uh, the Holy One and the True One, Yeshaya, Jesus Christ, and that he is the son of David, the Messiah. And we, he's true and holy, but uh, all, all holiness on earth, in his, in his sons here on earth, and uh, his only begotten son, the Messiah, is actually all derived from the Father because he is the, the only true God, and Yeshaya says that himself. So basically, I was also by way debunking this whole idea of uh, Trinity. It doesn't, it's not biblical. Um, now we continue with part eight. Now, okay, before we go there, uh, Yeshaya, Jesus Christ, um, came down on, um, came down to earth for a number of reasons. He came here to give us a, a correct understanding of the God the Father, who is our Father and our God too. Um, so he, he came us to give us a perfect um, theology and an understanding of who the Father is. He also came here to show us a model son. He modeled himself that everybody should aspire to be like Yesh uh, Haya. And of course, we also know that he came to give us access to the kingdom of, of God uh, through the cross, uh, Calvary. So he served as also, yeah, like I said, as a model of God's expectations of men, of yeah, the expectations that God has of men, that they should conform to the image of Yeshaya, the son, the only begotten son of God the Father, of Ahaya, um, and that he is the son of David, and the son of David is basically, um, the son of David is the Messiah. He came here to save uh, men and to restore um, what had, uh, to restore things to their original position, which is um, God and his family of humanoids. Um, now we continue with verse 8, and it reads, I know what you do, I know your works, I've put an up, uh, but before we get there, let's read Job 12, 14, which says, what he tears down cannot be rebuilt. Anyone who puts, he puts in prison shuts up, cannot be let out. Then we come to verse 8, which reads, I know what you do, I know your works, and I have put an open door before you, which no one can close. So God, Jesus gives access to God. It, access to God is through Yeshaya, and his preachers, they also give you access to Christ, and therefore God. So how co incorrectly we teach the gospel of the kingdom, he can shut up the kingdom to those uh, to the sheep on earth, and that's why he, God put, um, really um, is very harsh with people who mislead his people. So then he goes on and says, I know you have little strength, power, but you have obeyed, obeyed, obeyed my teaching, you've kept my word, and were not afraid to speak, and have not denied my name. The West um, translation reads, He who opens and no one shall shut, and who shuts and no one opens. I know with absolute clearness your works. Consider this. I have given you as a permanent position a door which has been permanently opened, which no one is able to close because you have but a small amount of power and you safeguarded my word by carefully observing it and you did not deny my name. Now, as I said in part one, that this really, uh, the Church of Philadelphia is actually a message to the Hebrews as they evangelize the kingdom to the rest, to all the world. Um, Luke 24, 45 to 49 reads, then we're just showing you how he can open up things uh, to, pe to pe people's minds, which also enable, enables them to go through the door. He says, uh, then Jesus opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He said to them, it is written that the Christ, the Messiah, would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. 
and that a change of hearts and lives and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations starting at Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things and look behold I will send you I will send you what my father has promised which is the Holy Spirit but you must stay in Jerusalem until you have received or are clothed with the power uh, from the Most High which is the Holy Spirit and Yeshaya prophesied in March in Matthew 24 uh, 14 he says the good news about the about God's kingdom will be preached in all the world to every nation then the end will come in Matthew 27 17 to 20 he's giving effect to this he says yeah he's telling he's instructing his people he says um, when they saw Jesus they worshiped him but some of them did not believe it was really Jesus then Jesus came to them and said all power in authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me so go and make followers disciples of all people in the world baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit teach them to obey everything that I have taught you and I will be with you always until the end of this age so now remember we he opened up their minds for them to know the scriptures and now he's sending them out out with the opening the way for them to carry out this thing with them and opened up their minds so that they can effectively teach and preach the word of God about the kingdom of heaven and then in John 20 uh, 21 it reads then Jesus said to them again peace be with you as the father sent me I now send you um, John 17 21 it reads father I pray that you can be one as that they can be one as you are in me and I am in you I pray that they can also be one in us then the world will believe that you sent me so now this is now the Holy Spirit uh, at work here that um, he will make us one with the Father and the Son they will come and dwell in us as we evangelize the word to the word wo the word to the world Colossians 1 23 reads this will happen if you continue strong uh, um, grounded established and sure firm steadfast in your faith you must not be moved away from the hope I brought to you um, to you by the good news that you heard that same good news has been told to every that same good news has been told preached to everyone every creature and in all creation in the world and under heaven and I Paul help in preaching it so here Paul as far as he was concerned he had reached the ends of the earth but we know that was not quite it was the known world at that time so th this conclusion is what is coming up now as we come to the end times and I think it will be totally done this whole preaching of the word will be fulfilled in the two witnesses with the two witnesses so now the Hebrews are out in the wilderness and in Romans 2 verses 9 to 10 it reads he will give there will be trouble affliction tribulation and suffering to everyone who does evil to the Jews first and to those who are not Jews but I will give glory honor and peace to everyone who does good to the Jews first and those um, who are to the Jews first and also to um, to the Greeks uh, those who are not Jews so so here we know that as we mentioned in part one that uh, Yeshaya is God's special servant and the Hebrews are also God's servant in carrying out the and making him known to all the world to all men mankind um, in Romans 3 2 it reads yes they are great benefits in every way being a Hebrew the most important thing is this God trusted the Jews with his teachings 
first. In Acts 3.26, it reads, God has raised up his servant, Yeshaya, and sent him to you, the Jews first, and, um, and through you, God will bless all nations. Um, and through them, that's the Jews, God would bless all nations. Uh, to bless them and by turning each of you away from doing evils, evil and wicked ways, and from wicked ways. So through uh, Yeshaya and, uh, and through the Jews, they, the Jews will bless, will be a blessing to all the, the nations on earth as they make known Yeshaya to all the peoples. Now, in John 4.22 it reads, you Samaritans worship something you don't understand. Uh, what we understand, what we understand, because salvation comes from the Jews, because the Messiah who brings salvation comes through the Jews. So this is the um, the, the the sequence of um, uh, of 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 uh, the of the delegated uh, authority and power. The Father gave the Son. The Son gave to the Hebrew people. To carry on the good work, uh, in um, in Romans 10:1, he says, "Brothers and sisters, the thing I want most, and my prayer to God is for all the Jews to be saved. So in the end, all Jews will be saved. And when we say all Jews, I think it is will be saved by salvation, and it is all those Jews who embrace and accept." Yeshaya as the Messiah and they believe on him. All those will be saved. It's not like every Jew on the earth is going to be saved. They, there is a number of people who can be saved. Not all will be saved. But of those that can be saved are all those who are saved. Uh, in Psalm 26, 5 to 6, it reads, Now whilst in the end of wilderness doing their work, remember they've been kicked out of uh, Jerusalem, they no longer have a homeland. And in um, Psalm 26, uh, 5 to 6, it reads, Those who cry as they plant crops, so the seed, that is the preaching, will sing shout at harvest time. Will, will sing shout at harvest time. Those who cry go out weeping, as they carry out the seeds, will return singing and carrying bundles of grain, of sheaves. So this has not been an easy thing because first remember that they don't actually have an option of going back to their country because their country is in ruins. Um, and that was the whole idea that they don't retreat because, you know, if you had the choice, they will say, ah, this is just too early, let's just go back home and not do what we're supposed to do. So he, in a way, as part of the judgment, they were because they didn't know that his time of visit, their time of visitation, he destroyed, they allowed the Gentiles to destroy the land and take it over so that they were pushed out to preach the gospel to all the earth. And whilst they're doing this, this is when they were crying and teaching and preaching, and, uh, but he, the promise is they will return singing and carrying bundles of sheaves in terms of the harvest. Now, and no man shall shut this door, no one has the power of preventing this, for he who control, has control over all things concedes these privileges to you to bring his program project to its desired end, and no man can shut it so as it should be in the power so as it should not be in the power of the adversaries to hinder his success. He is not going to allow his purpose to be uh, frustrated. In, Ju in Jeremiah 9.10 it reads, I, the Lord, will make the city of Jerusalem a heap of ruins, a home for wild dogs, and I will destroy the cities of Judah so no man can live there. So basically there was no way they could return there. In Ezekiel 21, 27, a ruin, a ruin, I will make it a ruin. This place will not be rebuilt or the kingdom will not be restored until the one comes who has the right to be king, that is um, Yeshaya, 
to whom judgment belongs, that is Yeshaya, then I will give him the right to rebuild and establish and restore the kingdom. Um, in Mark 3, 14 and 15, it reads, Jesus chose and called them apostles, um, and called them apostles, the ones that he chose. And he wanted them to be, says he wanted them to be with him, and he wanted to send them out. He wanted them to be with him, and he wanted to send them out to preach and to have the authority to force out demons. So this is basically um, the apostles. He sent them to, um, to all the towns and cities to preach the word, and he was going to follow. And in, in this case, it would be the, the, he'll be with them as the Holy Spirit. Um, and in Luke 9, 2, it reads, he sent the apostles out to tell um, about the kingdom and to heal the sick. And then the idea here, which was basically a pointer that what was going to happen, he says uh, in Luke 10, 1, it reads, after this, the Lord chose 72. Um, the number may, uh, may reflect the 70 nations, I think, uh, or the 70 palm trees and the seven uh, wells uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Exodus. Um, which, which is basically the seven, uh, the, the world, all the nations of the world. Uh, the, the, this is the foreshadows uh, the mission to the G uh, Gentiles, that word would go out to them, would be preached to all of them. This is where the 70 were sent by two by two and sent out in pairs ahead of him to every town and place where he planned to go. Uh, in Luke 10, 17, he says, then the 72 came back and they were happy. So now, obviously, now the, this is the conversion, the converted people. And they came back and they said, even the demons obeyed us when we used your name. So this is the success, um, um, foreshadows the success of this evangeliz evangelization um, work, which was, which was obviously entrusted to the Hebrew people. Now it says, I know what you do and I know your works. Now, it says, Matthew 10, 16, it says, I'm sending you out like sheep among the wolves. So be as clever, as wise as snakes and as innocent and harmless as doves. In John 20, 21. So it's... Uh, we're just reiterating what happened in and Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father sent you, I send you. As the Father sent me, I now send you. In Acts 26, 16 to 18, um, it reads, Stand up. This is why I have come to you today. I have chosen you to be my servant and my witness. You will tell people the things that you have seen and the things that I will show you. So there are things that he has seen and there are things that he is going to be shown. And I will keep you safe from your own people, the Hebrews, and even your enemies within in those uh, in the Gentile nations, uh, from from my people and also from the Gentile nations. And I'm sending you to them to open their eyes so that they may turn away from darkness to the and and to light away from the power of satan and to god then their sins can be forgiven and they can have a place with those people who have been made holy sanctified by believing in me so you are made sanctified you are sanctified when you believe and then he says, yes, I know your works. I know what you do and how you and, the, and you work hard and never give up. Um, you never give up your perseverance and endurance. I know you do not put up with the false teachings of evil people, evil doers or, um, or evil. You have tested those who say they are apostles, but really are not, and you found them to be liars. Um, I said in another translation here, this is, uh, it reads, uh, I know your works, good works of faith, love, and patience, which, uh, which lay much uh, in preaching, 
professing and maintaining the pure gospel which is done to some degree of perfection and with great sincerity since the church is not uh, since this church is not complained of. So he doesn't complain about the, uh, Philadelphia. This is the, the point that is being made here. So they are doing a good work. He's just telling them on to continue pressing and going, pushing ahead. And I know that it works, O oh Lord, approves of, um, the Lord approves of, the, of their work, um, and they understand the work that has been laid before them and their role and their function and their labor in preaching and propagating the gospel which Christ did not only know which Christ did um, which and they knew and they observed but also approves of and promises them a liberty to go on with and success in their labors under the nation under the notion of an open door so the of open door here refers to an enjoyment of some privilege or an opportunity um, and, and it can mean a, a, a number of things um, an open door speaks of an opportunity it is the Lord who takes the initiative opening the door to the kingdom by grace so he works on the recipient of the word the hearer of the word and the, and the preacher of the word so when they come together in his grace and because he says you, no one knows how actually things happen, how it grows. But when the two come together because of him who brings them together, then the conversion process can, does, can and will take place. And uh, he says, uh, I've opened a door before you which no one can close. Behold, I've set before you an open door, referring to an authority, like for instance in 3.7, he, he gives us them an authority. Um, they are king of uh, King David. He's talking about his righteousness and um, and how through Yeshaya Jesus he gives them access to God the Father. It puts access to God the Father is through Yeshaya. So this is the opportunity uh, that is uh, this is the open door. In through the evangelization, the preaching of the word, he makes he gives them access. Um, to the Father, but access to the Father is only through Him. Uh, in Isaiah 22, 20, 22, 22 says, when He opens a door, no one can close it, and when He closes it, no one can open it. Um, so here, this is uh, interpreted as Hebrews preaching, uh, Hebrew preachers preaching the gospel among the Gentile nations. And, uh, an open door is an ability to do good. You give them the strength um, and you open opportunities for them to do their work in those Gentile nations. Remember, they don't have a homeland. Up to today, they don't have a homeland. You open up, that's another opportunity, and the ability to do, do, do good. In, a, in a Acts 14, 27 to 28, we hear, uh, it reads, when they arrived in Antioch, Paul and Barnabas, they gathered the church together, they told, reported, recounted to the church all about what God had done with them and how God had made it possible for the Gentiles to believe he opened the door of faith to the Gentiles and they stayed there in a long considerable time uh, with the followers. So he, he opens an opportunity for, for people to come to them um, and, he, and this is done through the Holy Spirit. Uh, in uh, Corinthians 16, 8, it reads, uh, but uh, I will stay in Ephesus. Uh, um, okay, um, I will stay at Ephesus because a good opportunity for a great and growing work has been given. So these, these opportunities are the ones that you're supposed to seize. He gives you an opportunity and you should go through and um, yeah, through that door and you will you will you will draw men to him. Um, growing work has been given, a great and effective door and opportunity has opened up to me now and there are many people working against me, adversaries. Yeah, whilst he's opening up those, you cannot 
do, it does not presuppose that you will not meet up with resistance. Resistance is always there. The devil is always trying to frustrate uh, any efforts for um, for God um, God's work to be carried out in what he concerned considers to be his world. In 2 Corinthians 2, 12, it reads, when I came to uh, Troas uh, to preach the good news, the God, the Lord gave me a good opportunity there as well. Um, in Colossians 4, 3, he, he reads, um, also pray for me that God will give us an opportunity, open a door for us to tell people that his message pray that we can preach the secret that god has made known about uh yeshaya the messiah this is why i am in prison um that's why he's suffering so much because he is on a mission he has to tell the world about uh yeshaya colossians 1 26 to 29 it reads uh, the message is that the message is the secret uh, something God had not previously disclosed that is hidden from everyone since the beginning of time ages, but now it has been made known to God's holy people. God decided to let his people know his rich and glorious secret which he has for all people, the, the Gentiles. This great mystery is that Christ lives in you. He is our only hope for glory. Uh, Christ is in you, uh, the hope of glory. So we continue to preach, uh, to proclaim, announce Christ to each person using all wisdom to warn, uh, instruct, admonish, and to teach everyone in order to bring each one into God's presence as a mature person in Yeshaya. To do this, I work, toil, labor, and struggle using Christ's great strength that works so powerfully in me so the holy spirit is saying is that you are not alone out in the wilderness he gives you the strength to be able to go through the open doors he opens opportunities up for you he gives opens up your mind to teach the gospel effectively so you can make known um, the um make known the son of uh, uh, the only begotten son of of a, a higher and through him you access uh, you have access to the father and to the kingdom so and then a privilege it was also a privilege of access to the uh, heavenly uh, access uh, rather heavenly palace that uh, is that um, they had an abundant opportunity of securing their salvation the door being never closed against them by day or by night, a spiritual reality opportunity for all willing to grasp and own and grab and own and uh, and possess the kingdom, and um, and this is captured very well in Matthew 11:12, which reads, uh, "Since the time from the days of John the Baptist um, came, since the uh, the days John the Baptist came." Until now, the kingdom of heaven has been going forward in strength, advancing forcefully or subject to violence, suffering violent attacks, and forceful uh, or violent people have been trying to take it by force and hold on to it or to attack it. So once it was revealed, this, um, the kingdom of God, everybody is rushing in uh, with uh, boldness and, and almost um, by, by force, they need to get hold of um, to enter into the kingdom in revelation 21 25 it reads the city gates will never be shut to on any day because there is no night there so his light in isaiah 60 um, 10 to 12 it reads um, jerusalem foreigners will rebuild your walls and their kings will serve you this is in the end then I was angry in my wrath. When I was angry in my wrath, I hurt you. But now I want to be kind to you and comfort you. Um, your gates will be, always be open. They will not be closed uh, day, closed day or night so the nations can bring their wealth to you and their kings will be led to you. Um, 
leading it, uh, leading the way, either as captives or leading as a leading the procession of gifts. So the, the nations are going to serve you. The nation of the nation or kingdom that doesn't serve you will be destroyed. It will be completely ruined. So this is the reward for the great work that they've done. The world is going to is going to to serve them. They are going to serve. Uh, they are going to honor and respect and uh, the Hebrew people. In Ephesians one um, nine to ten, it reads. Um, God let us know, God let us know uh, his secret ministry, uh, the mystery of his will, the mystery, uh, mystery in scripture uh, was something that was either to and not being uh, known and his goal was to carry out his plan when the right time came in the fulfillment of time that all things in heaven and earth will be joined together, summed up or renewed in Christ as their head. Point number three. It may mean that uh, they had an opportunity, this open door is also an opportunity, a way of escape. Now, this is going to be the central thing of, uh, of, this, um, of this teaching, which is um, Philadelphia, that yes, there is a way of escape, and that way of escape uh, is, going to, is going to be the second exodus. So it's a, it's a way of escape to go out, to come out, uh, to leave a place by direct or, indirect, direct or indirect means, and narrowly and comfortably um, it will be achieved. There's, there's going to be a way of escape. So as although Christ accepts a little strength, yet belie believers must not rest satisfied in a little, but strive to grow in grace to be strong in faith, giving glory to God, persevere and enjoy in Christ, and he will energize and embolden them uh, very greatly. So much so your enemies will be forced to acknowledge your Father who is in heaven. When they see you uh, imaging him, people will be drawn and they will, because you stand out, because you don't, you're not a Babylonian. This, by the grace of Christ, will soften and persuade your enemies to make a way for the word and even make them a desire to be admitted into the communion of his people. So the imaging Christ is actually, you are going to be leading and draw people by the exemplary life that you live, live which is absolutely holy uh, and in Christ, which is different from what happens in Babylon. In Acts 4.13 it reads, the leaders so that Peter and Paul were not afraid to speak. Uh, they were bold and confident and they understood and they understood that these men had no special training or education uh, and were common, ordinary people, uneducated people with no formal training. Uh, so they were amazed and they realized that Peter and John had been with Jesus. So you have a little strength and you have kept my word and have not denied me, not denied my name. Um, so this points out to the history of the Hebrew people. Um, so they do have, you, you, you are bound to, when you come up with all these um, uh, this resistance and uh, persecution and uh, uh, hatred uh, in, your, in your missionary, in your uh, missionary work, you, 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 you tend to be sometimes to be a little discouraged, but then he gives you the courage to, to go on. Um, so, so their little power implies that there was a time in the past when um, they were stronger, right, when they had their homeland, uh, and the depletion of their strength is also an account that uh, she, like I'm saying, they no longer have a home. And, uh, and in the face of trials and persecution, uh, she can only run from town to town, country to country, but never back to her homeland because there is no homeland. Um, so Babylon to them is actually a big, big wilderness, a prison. In fact, she really has nowhere to run. There is nowhere to rest in Babylon. Yes, with God's hand, 
on her, she is more than sufficiently strong, as we indicated a little earlier, that he gives you strength and boldness. The Lord commends and accepts them from, for you have little strength, uh, notwithstanding the many and, and unending trials and persecution which sap your energy and, um, and resolve in the, in the wilderness of nations. Uh, nevertheless, they still remained in, they still remained there with the energy. Uh, they were not dead, and as long as this was the case, the door was still open for them to continue the good work. The words little strength may also refer either to the smallness of the number in comparison to host nations. I've always indicated that the Hebrew people are always a minority in all the nations where they are, and then all nations, tongues, uh, peoples, and tribes. Um, yeah, so they are found in every nation, um, tribe, people, and tongue, and are, are a minority, meaning that they are few in, com in, red, in comparison. In addition, it may re refer to a spiritual life and energy of the church, meaning that though a little weak, their vital energy remained wholly intact. The reward, the favor then, of a little strength is an open is a door opened to make things easier for them so that they can com complete their mission, they can fulfill their destiny, uh, preaching the good news of salvation to all the earth, the Gentiles. For now will all their prophecies, um, all th those prophecies, for now will all those prophecies be accomplished in respect to the spiritual grandeur of the church in the end with regard to, to number, power, and riches. Um, as we know, Christ says that he was going to inherit the earth or the nations. The Lord accepts that some will yield greater harvests to his glory than others. Some work harder and longer in the vineyard than others, but all receive a denier. Um, remember when that parable that yeah, whether you come in at five o'clock or you came in at eight o'clock, the reward is the same. So, but the, the, that's the reward you enter the uh, the kingdom. The only thing that may be uh, the difference is the the reward that you'll get. But the basic reward is entry into the kingdom. Now, within that, there are certain um, rewards over and above just the entry, um, and. So you receive a denier uh, in salvation in this context, um, the reestablishment of Israel for the Hebrew people, it, the country after this great work, they are going to enter the kingdom, then they, 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 Israel is going to be Yeshayal, Yeshayal is going to be established in their very own homeland as in the beginning and, and at the intermediate and penultimate stage of the journey. So they, they are, they're going to get their homeland not in this period, but in the new millennium. It will be established clearly. But whilst God pours out His wrath on the on the, the earth at that time, and in this time that we are speaking, that kingdom has not been established. It will be established in the new millennium. So the strategy of the enemy is to relentlessly attack, persecute day and night. Uh, he affords you little risk, both, both physically and spiritually, with the intent of wearing you out and to bring you to a place or a point of surrender. Uh, in John 16:33, it reads, I told you these things so that you can have peace in me. In the world you will have trouble, persecution and suffering, but be brave. I have defeated, I have victory, I have conquered, and I have overcome the world. In 1 John 5, 4 to 5, it reads, because everyone who is a child of God conquers, overcomes the world, and this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith, our belief in God Almighty and His Anointed One. Um, in 1 John 4, 4, it reads, my dear children, you belong to God and have defeated and conquered and overcome them. The, uh, because God's spirit who is in you is greater than the devil who is in the world. That which 
is in you is greater than that which is in the world. So just remember that victory is for the overcomer and he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Now, the, we're just going back to, to recap the kind of uh, temptations that may arise. We remember that in, um, in we, okay, we, let's, uh, let's, let's keep this structure. Uh, and you did not, and you did keep my word and did not deny my name. This suggests previously, as I've said, um, they had been called to deny the name of Yeshaya and to stop abiding in his word, and they had refused. They could, this could have also referred to the, um, to the local Jewish synagogue. Um, there are the two stories here. There's the one in, in Matthew where he says, uh, before I tell you the truth, tonight before the rooster crows, you will have denied me three times. Um, and then we know that also in John, uh, about the man who had been, who had been healed, and, um, and his parents said this because um, because it was done on the Sabbath and the, the synagogue, uh, the, the, the priesthood did not like this. And when they were asked, because they didn't want to be excommunicated, they said, his parents said, oh, it's because, this is in John 9, 22 to 23, his parents said this because they were afraid of the elders who had already decided that anyone who said Jesus was uh, the Christ, the Messiah, would, would be avoided. Uh, will be put out of the synagogue, they'll be ex excommunicated. That is why the parents said he is old enough. So this is the cowardly kind of behavior that, that, that is, um, which is, which you are not allowed to have, to be afraid of men, and um, this, which is what is to, stories basically point out so he is saying that you have not read <coughs> you have these people who are evangelizing have not uh, denied my name when christians were brought before uh, pagan magistrates in times of persecution they were required to renounce the name of christ and they will be increasingly as we go towards the end in encouraged and forced to renounce uh, the name of Christ and not even mention him and to dis disown him in pub in, uh, publicly. The disciples of Christ have always been persecuted, pers persecuted just as Christ himself was persecuted and even today Christians continue to be persecuted throughout the world in India, China, in Arab nations, North Korea, just to mention a few. And some of the members of the church in uh, Philadelphia have been exposed to such a trial. Uh, to such trials, and we stood the trial firmly. Um, he's talking about his people here. And in Luke 9, 23, it says, um, Jesus said to them all, if people want to follow me, they must give up things they want. They must deny themselves, set aside their own interests. They must be willing to give up their lives, take up their cross daily and follow me. And you have obeyed me, this is what he's saying. And those who have obeyed me, you have obeyed my teaching, and we are not afraid to speak, and have not denied my name. This is what he's saying to Philadelphia. Um, yes, um, in Matthew 10, 33 says, but all who stand before others and say they do not believe in me, deny, disown me before the people, I say before I will say before my Father in heaven that they do not belong to me um, because they have denied him. And then Paul, he answers, he says, I, in Romans 1, 16, I am not afraid of the good news. I am not ashamed of the good news because it is the power of God. Uh, this is the power God uses to save everyone who believes, um, to save the Jews first and then to save Gentiles. Um, <clears throat> in Matthew no, 2 Timothy 1, 12, it reads, I am suffering now because I tell the good news for this reason, but I am not ashamed because I know that I know the one in whom I have believed. 
I have my faith raised, where, where my faith raised is um, where whom I believed, and I am sure he is able to protect what he has trusted me with. So he will protect you, but, you, but don't forget. And then, okay, let's continue. And um, what he has trusted me with, or I have entrusted with him, until that day, um, the final day of judgment and reward. So it may mean escaping or it may mean even death because, but you will not be ashamed of the gospel or of Christ of who you, whom you believe. Now the world, you know that it tends to use uh, certain measures um, as, such as economic isolation, exclusion from certain uh, industries and trades are here. They were talking about um, uh, guilds, etc., which is basically like Hollywood. You may not, you will not get access to entry into that, gain entry into certain um, certain industries, and a lot of them, unless you denounce um, Christ and pay allegiance to Satan. So, equally, the Hebrew in the diaspora uh, have also been uh, excluded and. Uh, there are certain industries and uh, trades which they are excluded from. And for the Gentiles, and of course the Gentiles too, who also um, uh, pay allegiance um, to a God, they are equally ex excluded from Hollywood, the music industry, etc., unless they had renounced allegiance to Yeshaya. In fact, nowadays, the whole idea is that you don't even mention his name, and they will pay you not to mention him, his, his, his name. Um, but it does not stop there. But you will have to demonstrate your allegiance to the dragon in word and deed in the very near future, uh, publicly and by taking on certain markings. In Deuteronomy 28, 64, it reads, then the Lord will scatter you among the nations from one end of the earth to the other, and you there you will serve other gods of wood and stone, gods that neither you nor your ancestors have known. You will have no rest among the nations and no place that is yours. The Lord will make your mind worried, weak, and your soul sad. Um, depressed. In Isaiah 66, 19 it reads, I will put a mark on some of the people and I will send some of these saved people or those who survive to the nations. And this is when he's throwing them out of, um, when they were rooted out of uh, Ju Judah and um, Judea by the Romans, to the nations, um, to Tubal, Greece and all the faraway coastland coastlands, these people will, these people who have never, you've never heard about that I have, <coughs> who have never heard about what I have done, nor seen my glory. So the saved people will tell the nations about my glory. So this was his whole strategy. He scatters them so that they can tell people of his glory. In Isaiah 61, 9 reads, everyone in all nations will know the children of my people, their descendants' seed uh, will be among the Gentiles, uh, will be known among the nations. Anyone who sees them will know that they are my people and the Lord whom the Lord has blessed uh, because they will stick out like a sore thumb. Um, and the reaction is that they are going to be the most hated people. In Jeremiah 24, 19, it says, And I'll make these people hated as an evil people by all the kingdoms of the earth. People will make fun of them and tell jokes about them and point fingers at them and curse them. Uh, curse them wherever I scatter them, which is throughout the world. So there's only one group of people in underclass that everybody knows who's hated by every nation. In Ezekiel 16, 14, it reads, then you, then you become famous, your fame spreads among the nations because you were so beautiful. 
your beauty was perfect because of the glorious splendor I gave you, says the Lord God. Psalm 57, 9 reads, uh, The Lord will praise, the Lord, I will praise you among the nations. I will sing songs of praise about you to all nations. That is the Hebrew response. Um, so, a call, there will be a call coming shortly, a call to show loyalty to the Pharaoh, the Caesars, uh, to the matrix system. Um, for people to show their allegiance by taking the mark of the beast. And suggest that the persecution, this verse suggests that the persecution originated with Satan. Um, Uh, is <clears throat> yes, this organized um, hatred of the of the Jewish people it started off with Satan, and um, and the whole system is actually geared against um, God's people. It's opposed to God's people that they are the 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 main target. Um, the, his his, um, the descendants of uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are the main targets. They are the people they don't want to hear. And um, so, and this, th this thing is actually orchestrated and actually uh, Satan's agenda is actually orchestrated and is actually driven by the uh, Japheth's descendants. And I want to point out to Genesis 9, 25 to 27. Um, this is when Noah was, um, when he, his, his uh, son, um, well, I think it is uh, Canaan, Ham, uh, when they exposed his nakedness, instead of concealing his father's shame, he basically went and um, broadcasted it uh, to everyone. To his other brothers. It says, he explained, he exclaimed, cursed be Canaan, he shall be the servant of servants to his brethren. He said, he also said, blessed be the Lord, the God of Shem. Now, the Lord, the God of Shem. And blessed be the Lord, my God, um, my God, and blessed by the Lord, my God, be Shem and let Canaan be his servant. And that's the Amplified Translation. And then for 27 it reads, and I pray God now, remember in the previous verse you was talking about the Lord, the God of Shem. Now he's talking about, I pray God. Now, this is in the context that God assigned an, 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 um, an angel or a God to every nation. This is the God now he is praying to. He says, I pray God, Javan, whoever it is, Zeus, that you will give Japheth more and more land and let him take over the territory of Shem. May Canaan be his slave. So here, this was his, his, his personal desire, which had nothing to do with God. He wanted to, everything to be ceded over to Japheth. Uh, he wanted him to be, that was his favorite son. And uh, this is the contemporary English uh, version. So this is what happened. So he wanted all the land to be given uh, you wanted uh, Japheth to take over the land of, of Seth, including Jerusalem and Judea. So, so what has happened now in fulfillment of this thing? Uh, Japheth's uh, descendants, uh, they've created a, a pseudo-political state they call Israel, whose inhabitants are one of his descendants. Um, because you know where they came from. And together, they are there saying that these are the true people, they are the others, these are the true people, and all the others who claim there are no others, we are it, we are God's people. And they play games, they pretend like they hate each other, but they don't, because we all know that which nation underpins Israel's existence. So it's one of the brothers. So they, they play games and they're playing musical chairs, and, but the time is coming when, uh, when they want to sit down 
down, there will be no chairs to sit on, they'll be sitting on the, on the ground. As mentioned earlier, the interpretation of um, open door also refers access to a thing, to someone. In regard to the Church of Philadelphia, there was no restraint. He, was, he has given them the most unlimited privileges, um, which is God's kingdom. The gospel, the temple of salvation, was thrown open to them and the whole world. The celestial city was accessible, and the whole world was before them, and anywhere and everywhere they might do good, and at all times they may grant access to the kingdom through the correct teaching of, of the gospel. It says, Behold, I've set before you an open door no man can shut, or which no one can shut for evangelization, a door of spiritual usefulness. This open door is an opportunity of preaching the gospel and a very great freedom of mind in the preaching of it. And, uh, and the great attention in the hearer's ear, whose hearts will be open to observe, receive, and embrace the word. The frequent, even relentless preaching of the word with great success and effect, which will not be in the power of any creature to stop or hinder. Millions of Gentiles will flow into the church thereby, and consequently a very large gathering in of souls to Christ. And then the nation of the Hebrew, Yashael, Israel as they call it, will be born at once when they have completed this mission. In short, this has to be done before the re-establishment of the Hebrew nation state as before, except now it will be far grander in extent and glory. Yeshaya will be the garden, is, is the garden of Eden. All has been restored as in the beginning. And then in Revelation 21, 16, it tells us about this great city, the new city of God, with its... Um, um, which is this foundation of the um, the um, the twelve sons and the gates of the twelve apostles, um, and it's a listen uh, how grand it is. Um, its length was equal to its width. The angel measured the city with a rod. The city was one thousand five hundred miles, which is basically two point four two thousand four hundred and ten kilometers long as it is wide, it's its width and its width and length are equal, it's a cube, it's a square. Uh, and it's also one thousand five hundred miles high. Um, and that is the city. But then I I I want to also point out that yes, uh, an open door means that, but as I indicated, and it will amplify this will be amplified I think in uh, when you come to verse ten, is that the people that they will be afforded an open door will be a way of escape and this comes as a reward because of what you have done i'm going to allow you i'm going to save you as i did in the first exodus and take you from the all the torment and the great tribute will not experience the great tribulation so it is also a way of escape um, in Isaiah 66, um, 19 to 21, it reads, I will put a sign on some of the people and I will send them to, the, to these saved people, to the nations of Tarshish, uh, the land of archers, and all the faraway countries. These people who, who have never heard about what I have done, this, we mentioned this, we talked about this earlier, um, nor seen my glory. So the saved people, these are the ones who survived the um, uh, 70 AD, the nations um, would tell the nations about my glory and they will bring all the fellow Israelites who were already there from all nations to my holy mountain in Jerusalem as an offering to the Lord. Your fellow Israelites will come on horses now, this is now after God has poured out his wrath, the people who are left, they, were, they are going to come back now. These the Gentiles are going to be, they'll come back on horses and donkeys and camels and chariots and wagons. And they will be like a grain offering that the people bring in 
um, in clean containers to the temple, says the Lord, and I will choose some, even some of these people, to be priests and Levites, says the Lord. So these people are going to come back. Uh, the, the Hebrew people are going to come back to Jerusalem, and he's going to make some of them even priests and, um, and Levites. In Isaiah uh, 54, 1 to 6, it reads, Sing, barren woman, who has never had a baby, fill the earth with song, and you who've never experienced childbirth, you are ending up with far more children than all those childbearing uh, women. God says so. Clear lots of ground for your, for your tents. Make your tents large. Spread out. Use plenty of rope. Drive the tent pegs deep. You are going to need lots of elbow room for your growing family. You are going to take over all nations. You are going to resettle, uh, abandon you. Will, you are going to resettle abandoned cities. Don't be afraid. You are not going to be embarrassed. Don't hold back. You are not going to come up short. You will forget all about the humiliations of your youth and the in in indignities of being widow, being a widow who fade from memory because now I remember they're there without their out without their gods. They don't have a homeland. For they don't have a temple. For your maker is your bridegroom. His name is God of the angels, armies. Your redeemer is the holy one of Israel, known as God of the whole earth. You were like an abandoned wife, devastated with grief, and God welcomed you back like a woman married young and then left, says the, your Lord. He's talking about their history when he he punished them and kicked them out, destroyed the temple, etc. So it's like they were bad. Uh, Israel was like was abandoned as a young woman. Um, uh, the Amplified translation reads, um, O oh, barren woman, you who did not bear, break forth into singing and cry aloud, you who did not tra travel with child, for the spiritual children of the desolate will, of the desolate one will be more than the children of the married, uh, of the married wife, says the Lord. He's talking about the Hebrew the Gentiles and their gods. Enlarge the place of your tent. Let the curtains of your habitations be stretched out. Spare not. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. For you will spread abroad to the right and to the left, and your offspring will, be, will possess the nations and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Now, reference now to the numbers. Now, O Israel, you are talking about this. They are going to be, they'll turn out to be more than people ever imagined. And this is the fulfillment of a promise that he made in Hebrews uh, 11, 12 years now, talking. This man was so old, he was almost as good as dead. But from him, what this one man came, uh, Abraham, um, begotten as many descendants as there are, you will beget as many descendants as there are stars in the sky, like the sand on the seashore, they will not be, that could not be counted. Genesis 15, 5, it reads, And the Lord laid Abraham outside and said, Look at the sky, there are so many stars, you cannot count them. Your descendants likewise will be too many to count. Genesis 22, 17, 18 reads, I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. There will be as many as the stars um, and the sand of the seashore, and they will capture the cities of their enemies. Um, in other words, if they're going to have converts uh, among the Gentiles. They're going to convert many Gentiles. Through your descendants, all the nations of the earth will be blessed because you obeyed me. And this is the thing. All the nations of the earth are blessed in many ways. First of all, that the, the Yeshaya is made known to them. Point number one. He's made they make known to they make known um, the Christ, the Messiah. 
and, and through him they have access to the Father, but also because the Hebrew people are blessed, these countries, they also benefit materially. That is why they do not let the Hebrew people out of bondage, just like in Israel. I know it may appear like they, they are not in bondage. They are. They won't let them go. And this is going to become very evident when they do leave how his reaction. They are blessed because the Hebrew people are in those countries. When, once they leave, they go with their blessing. And that is why, apart from the fact that Satan wants to kill them all, but he, is not, he doesn't want them to get away. And, they, and right now, they don't want them to, get to leave because that's where they know that they are blessed because of them, through them. In Genesis 32, 11 to 12, it reads, Please save me from my brother Esau. I am afraid he will come and kill me. All of us, even the mothers with their children, you said to me, I will treat you well and make your children as many as the sand of the seashore. There will be too many to count. So now he's recounting the promise that God had made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That, and this promise is going to be fulfilled. This brings us to our point of uh, introspection and meditation. And um, from Revelation chapter 10, verses 8 to 11, and um, it reads, Then I heard the same, same voice from heaven again saying to me, Go and take the open scroll that is in the hand of the angel that is standing on the sea and on the land. So I went to the angel and told him to give me the small scroll. And he said to me, Take the scroll and eat it a symbol of internalizing the word. It will be sour, bitter in your mouth uh, because it is a message of judgment. But in your mouth, it will be as sweet as honey because it is God's word and because it brings salvation and vindication to his people. So I took the small scroll from the angel's hand and ate it. In my mouth, it tasted sweet as honey. But after I ate it, it was sour, bitter in my stomach. Then I was told, you must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, languages, and kings. You must share the word you have just received. The contemporary English version reads, Then the same voice said, Keep on telling what will happen to the people of many nations, races, and languages, and also to kings. And our benediction comes out of Numbers. Um, chapter 6 verses 22 to 27 again from the expanded translation and it reads and the lord said to moses tell aaron and his sons this is how you should bless the yasha elites um, say to them may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord guard you may the lord show you his kindness make his face shine upon you and have mercy on you may the lord be gracious to you may the lord watch over you Lift up his countenance, presence, um, his, lift up his face, presence, and countenance upon you and give you peace. So Aaron and his sons will bless the Yashaelites with my name. Put my, my name upon uh, the children of Yashael and I will bless them. Thank you and may God bless you all.